Hey guys, so what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today is Vlogmas Day number three and we are going to be talking about a Christmas book haul, all the Christmas books that I have for this year to read. I'm really excited. I've only ever read one Christmas book or maybe two. I read The Holiday Swap and um, Always in December last year. Actually, Always in December was my first year of 2022. So those books aren't in this video. Those are the only two other Christmas books. I'm a liar. I, heard, I remembered another one that I read is The 12 Dates of Christmas. I enjoyed all of those. Um, I think Always in December was my most favorite, but that wasn't even like a holiday. It was just called Always in December. But anyways, today we are going to be talking about the books that I bought for this year. Super excited and yeah, I haven't read any of them. So if you guys have any info about them, let me know which one's your favorite. It's gonna be kind of funny because the video coming after this one is going to be my December TBR and all of these books are gonna be on it. So sorry you're seeing double the books, but we're gonna do a little haul. Alrighty, so the first book we have is One Day in December by Josie Silver. Josie Silver, I read The Two Lives of Lydia Bird in November and it was fantastic. Fantastic, so I'm super excited for this one just because her writing is beautiful I've heard that this kind of teeters on the something borrowed um, Which is a romance movie based off of a book it kind of teeters on that kind of trope um, So yeah, let's read the back of it Two people ten chances one unforgettable love story Lori is pretty sure love at first sight doesn't exist anywhere But in the movies then through a misted up bus window one snowy December day She sees a man who she knows instantly is the one their eyes meet, there's a moment of pure magic, and then her bus drives away. Okay. Certain they're fated to find each other again, Lori spends a year scanning every bus stop and cafe in London for him. But she doesn't find him, at least not when it matters. Instead, they reunite at a Christmas party when her best friend Sarah giddily introduces her new boyfriend to Lori. It's Jack, the man from the bus, it would be. Oh my god. What follows for Lori, Sarah, and Jack is 10 years of friendship, heartbreak, missed opportunities, roads not taken, and destinies reconsidered. One Day in December is a joyous, heartwarming, and immensely moving love story to escape into and, rem and a reminder that fate takes inexplicable turns along the route to happiness. So yeah, That Sounds Fantastic is also a Reese's Bo Book Club pick, which you know Reese's Book Club is always going to be good. She really does pick the best books. I'm super excited for this one. Um, you can't tell me that doesn't sound like fantastic. Next one I have is A Very Merry Bromance. This is the newest addition to the Bromance Book Club series. I've actually only read the first book, so I'm maybe taking a risk by reading the last book that is published and not reading any of the in-between, but I'm pretty sure these romances are standalones, but if you read them, like, you see the characters. Like, the main character of this we've seen before, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. It says his name's Colton, and I can't remember a Colton from the first book, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It says, tis the season for a bromance book club matchmaking mission. Country Music's golden boy Colton Wheeler felt the most perfect harmony when he was with Gretchen Winthrop, but for her, it was a love him and leave him situation. A year later, Colton is struggling to push his music forward in a new direction. If it wasn't about to be the most magical time of the year, and if not for, for the support of the bromance book club, he'd be wallowing in self-pity. It's hard for immigration attorney Gretchen not to feel a little scrooges, scrooges about the excess of Christmas when her clients are scrambling to afford their rent. So when her estranged, wealthy family reaches out with an offer that will allow her to better serve the community, she's unable to say no. She just needs to convince Colton to be the new face of her family's whiskey brand. No big deal. Colton agrees to consider Gretchen's offer in exchange for three dates before Christmas. With the help of the Bromance Book Club, Colton throws himself into the task of proving to her there's a spark between them. But Gretchen and Colton will both need to over overcome the ghost of Christmas past to build a future together. So yeah, this sounds so cute, and I think the cover is the one of the most adorable covers I've ever seen. So very excited about this one. I have is called Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayless, and this is actually the same author as 12 Dates of Christmas, which I read that Christmas of 2020, so two years ago. Um, and I did enjoy that book. I actually did it for Abby Aslan's book club when she still had her podcast called The Gen Z Girl. So anyways, that's a trip down memory lane. But this one says, Eleanor Noel, Nori for short, is quite content running her secondhand bookshop in London. Forever torn between her working class upbringing and her classmates' extravagant lifestyles at the posh private school she attended one on scholarship, Nori has finally figured out how to keep both at equal distance. 
So when two of her oldest friends invite their whole gang to spend the time leading up to their wedding together at the castle near their old school, Nora must prepare herself for an emotionally complicated few days. The reunion brings back fond memories, but also requires Nora to dodge an ill-advised former fling when she falls quite literally into the arms of Isaac, the castle's head gardener, who has nothing but contempt for the snobby prep school kids. The attraction between them is undeniable, and as Nori spends more time with Isaac during the wedding festivities, she finds herself falling hard for the boy she used to consider an enemy. Nori and Isaac explore their common ground, but pressures mount on all sides, and Nori must decide what kind of life she wants to live and what sort of love is worth the risk. Ugh, I feel like that sounds so cute, and the little blurb says a city bookshop owner heads to the English countryside for a holiday reunion, only to face her childhood enemy. Ugh, oh my gosh, I love it, and again, the cover is stunning. I just, I love cartoon covers. I think they're so pretty, and Anyways, like, oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I'm so excited for this. Next book is actually the first holiday book I bought this year and I just got it at Target. And my friend Grace is currently reading it. She said it's a little interesting. I don't know if it really fits, like these are kind of contemporary romance we have here. And I think this is just like a traditional, a traditional like, grocery store book. I'm not sure. You guys can tell me. This one is called Home Sweet Christmas by Susan Mallory. Okay, let's read it. It says, until Cameron Neff can return to her real life in Chicago, she's in Wishing Tree to care for her twin sisters. She's not looking for forever love, not here, but handsome hoteler Jake Crane is a temptation she can't resist, so she should suggest a pair up for the season. No golden rings, no broken hearts. At his side, she sees her hometown through Christmas colored eyes. The cheer is cheerier, the joy more joyful. She thought she had put her future on hold, but maybe her real life was here all along, waiting for her to come home. New in town, River Best is charmed by Wishing Tree's homespun traditions and warm-hearted people. When she's crowned Snow Queen, she's honored but wary. Dylan Tucker, her king, seems like the stuff of sugar plum dreams, but she can't shake the feeling that he's hiding something big. As they perform their royal duties, tasting cookies, lighting trees, Dylan's good humor and melty kisses draw her to the brink of love but she can't let herself fall until she uncovers his secret, even if her lack of faith means losing him forever. So we get like a dual point of view in this, and I'm very, I'm very intrigued. I don't know, I have no idea what to expect, but I am excited. I'm excited because I'm pretty sure this author does a lot of holiday romances, so I am looking forward to this one. Next one is from the same author of Always in December, which like I said, that was actually my first book of this year, and it was the Me Before You trip, if that tells you anything. But this is what the cover looks like. It says, sometimes the best gifts in life are the ones you don't expect. Cassie and Tom lost their parents at a young age and relied on each other, as well as community of friends to cope. They were especially close when Tom's best friend, Sam, who always made sure that Tom and Cassie were surrounded with love. But now, 20 years later, Cassie has lost Tom as well. And in a way, she's also lost Sam. Over the years, they've drifted apart, and these days, the man she's always always had a crush on is someone she doesn't even recognize. She's never felt more alone. Then Cassie finds an envelope with her name on it, written in Tom's terrible handwriting, and she knows immediately what it is. It's a first clue in the Christmas scavenger hunt that Tom made for her every year. He promised her for months that this year's would be the grandest one yet. At first, she's too scared to open the envelope. What if, what if she can't figure out the clues without his help? Or what if she does figure them out and her and her last connection to Tom is gone. Tom's presence sets Cassie on a heart-wrenching and beautiful journey that will change her life, if she lets it. And as she travels from London to the Welsh mountains to the French countryside, she reconnects with old friends, rekindles a lost love, and most important, rediscovers herself. But once she's solved the final clue, will she be brave enough to accept the gift her brother has given her, and the love it's led her to? Oh, so that sounds so good. I don't know which one came first, this one or the other one, but I don't know. This sounds so sweet. I'm very excited. The lighthouse is very cute. Um, yeah, very excited. This one I have is Once Upon a December by Amy E. Reichart. Never read anything from this author, but again, the cover is adorable. We love, we love cartoon covers. This says, a one-of-a-kind Christmas market offers holiday magic in this new romance from the author of the Kindred Spirit Supper Club. With a name like Astro Noel Snow, holiday spirit isn't just a seasonal specialty, it's a way of life. But after a stinging divorce, Astro's yearly trip to the Milwaukee Christmas market takes on a whole new meaning. She's ready to eat, drink, and be merry, especially with the, with the handsome stranger who saves the best Kringle for her at his family bakery. For Jack Clausen, the jewel marked snowy lights and charming shops stays the same, while the world outside the joyful street changes, magically leaping from one December to the next every four weeks. He has never minded living this charmed existence until Asher shows him the life he's been missing outside of the festive red brick, red brick alley. After a swoon-worthy series of dates, some 
Yuletide magic and the unexpected glow of new love, Asher and Jack must decide whether their relationship can weather all seasons or if what they're feeling is as ephemeral as marshmallows and a mug of hot chocolate. This is super interesting. I don't know how, but when I was originally reading that, I didn't realize that Jack just jumps from season to season or Christmas to Christmas. That is absolutely crazy. Okay, yeah, I'm even more excited for this now. Okay, the next one we have is Just Like Magic, which is written by Sarah Hogle, which she's the author of You Deserve Each Other, which is one of my favorite contemporary romances. So when I saw that she has a holiday, I was like, I have to pick this up. And this is what it says. It says the holidays were never her thing until her unwittingly summons the holiday spirit before her very eyes. So again, we're getting like some sort of like magical type of Christmas. Betty Hughes only knows a comfort, a luxury, flaunting a collection of designer purses in an enviable dream home in Hawaii. That was before she lost all of her money. <laughs> Long obsessed with her public image, Betty boosts an extravagant lifestyle on social media, but the reality is Betty is broke and squatting in Colorado and her family has no idea. Christmas, with its pressures to meet familial expectations, is looming when Betty plays a vinyl record of All I Want for Christmas is You backward and accidentally conjures up Hall, the holiday spirit in the form of a charming and handsome, if offbeat man. Once the shock wears off, Betty knows she's stumbled upon the greatest gift, a chance to make all her holiday wishes come true, plus a ready-made fiancé. But as some of Betty's wishes lose their charm, she finds herself thrown off kilter by Hall's sweet nature. Suddenly, grumpy Betty is finding her heart merry and light, but the happier she gets, the shorter Hall's time on earth grows. Can Betty channel the Christmas spirit and learn to live with goodwill toward all men? Or will her selfish ways return as soon as the holidays are over? Oh, I think that sounds so good. I'm very excited to read this. Sounds like it's kind of like Grumpy Sunshine, where the boy is the sunshine, which I love that. So, very excited. Hey guys, we are on our last and final book of this video, and that is All I Want for Christmas by Maggie Knox, which she is the author of The Holiday Swap, which I mentioned I read last year in 2021. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and read the back of this. It says true love wasn't on their holiday wish list. When Sadie and Max are selected as contestants on the famed reality singing show Star Maker, each thinks they've finally gotten their big Nashville break. But then they're paired up for a duet week and stun the world with a romantic onstage chemistry. With fans going wild for Saxy, the new the network demands that they remain a duo on and off stage or exit the competition. Faking a relationship until their final performance in the Star Maker holiday special shouldn't be too hard, except for one small problem. Sadie and Max can't stand each other, but with their dreams just within reach, they agree to the ruse. Will their fake relationship be exposed before they can win, or might their phony connection turn real by the Christmas finale? That sounds so good. Oh my gosh, I feel like we have like such a good collection of books. I am so excited to read all of these. Let me know if you've read any of them already. I know most of these came out this year. Um, but yeah, let me know. Let me know other holiday Christmas ebooks that you're reading. I will talk to you guys very soon. Peace and love. Bye guys.